Hello, everybody, and welcome to Success Life Live, the YouTube edition. My name is Eric Reed. I'm your host, I'm your coach, I'm your friend, and I'm here just to share a few tips and tricks to help you really begin to build that life of success that you see, to begin to move forward to where you want to go. That place of where I was to where I want to be is possible. And through coaching and through Success Life Live, I hope to help you in that journey. So I'm glad you took time to stop by our YouTube channel. Take a moment and do the like, follow, share, subscribe, you know, the thing, the comment, so that I know you were here and that you found value in it. So today I wanted to take a minute and talk about making the impossible possible. You know, it's funny, the other day my, my son came home and he had a spelling list and on that spelling list it said impossible. And then the definition attached was um, something that is never possible. And I, I cringed, I, I sort of like ugh, felt really uncomfortable with that because though that is the definition, it sort of planted my mind that impossible. You know, there are many times that we use that word, oh, it's impossible, it's never gonna happen, it's, it's just not possible. And I didn't wanna program him to thinking that it was that concrete, that simple, that straightforward. And so we talked about it and I sort of encouraged him that impossible means that it appears not possible based on the current information. We had to sort of modify the definition because I wanted him to go through life knowing that what other people say is impossible was still possible. He just needed to do something, learn something, be something different to get to it. So when I tell you that we're gonna talk about the five elements of making the impossible possible, I hope you'll understand that when you think it's impossible, when you think it can't be done, when you look at life and you say, you know what, it's just impossible. But you'll remember the lesson that my nine-year-old son had to learn in the middle of a spelling test, that it really is possible. It's just based on the current situation, it appears impossible, all right? By the way, he did really well on the spelling test, so he learned a new definition and mastered a new world. Word. So again, my name is Eric Reed, and this is Success Life Live, the YouTube edition. And we're going to talk about the five elements of a breakthrough or making the impossible possible. Okay, so the first thing is you hit that level, that, that level of enough is enough. You know that level when, like at Thanksgiving or a holiday dinner, when you've eaten and somebody pushes you like, oh, you've got to try this. Just, just take one more, just take one bite. And you're like, I couldn't, I absolutely couldn't. If I ate one more thing, I would explode across the table. Well, often in our lives, whether it's with our finances or with our fitness or in our relationships or in our business, we reach that point where we've just consumed so much of the negative, so much of the disappointment, so much of the setbacks, so much of the frustration that we really can't take in one more bite that we look at it and think, if I even try, like if I have to go to that office, you know, carry around this, this air or CPAP machine or, you know, be in this relationship or go to, you know, my bank and one more time beg for a loan, I'm gonna just die. I'm just, I'm just, I'm gonna explode across the table. And so that first point is developing that awareness, getting to that point. Now, I'm not saying that we all have to hit that rock bottom, homeless, living on the street, tin can kind of moment to get to the beginning of the breakthrough. But what we have to do is begin to look at our life and say, you know what? Maybe I don't feel the enough is enough, but do I have the freedom to take a vacation when I want? Do I have the finances to take a vacation, to go where I want, to spend what I want, to be who I want to be on that vacation? Do I have the luxury of choosing the people I go with and enjoying it and spending time and laughing and celebrating? Or am I having to do these things because of the circumstances, whether it's my fitness, my finances, my business, my family, my relationships, am I having to endure it? And if you focus in really, really hard on it, then you'll begin to feel that enough is enough, that level one. I mean, think of it. Have you ever wanted to take a vacation, go someplace, do something? And the first thing you had to check was your bank book and then suddenly check with your boss and then check with your spouse to see if it was okay. 
Did you have to go through this checklist of gaining permission or were you able to say, you know what, I'm in control of my life. I've got the finances, I've got the business, I've got the comfort and the security and, and the relationship. We're going for it. So that first level, that enough is enough, that one more bite, one more thought, one more moment like that and I'm done. The second step is really that idea of um, dissatisfaction, is being able to say, you know what, I'm not gonna just be here. I'm not gonna live in this contentment. This isn't who I was designed to be. This isn't what I've been designed to do. This isn't my voice. This isn't my place. This isn't who I am. This isn't right. I'm not satisfied with just being here. And when I talk about businesses, so often I coach and I work with businesses and they're having some success. They're stable, they're meeting the bills, they're growing at, you know, the click, 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 two beats, you know, up and two beats back and three beats up kind of thing. And they're like, you know, this is, eh, we're okay. We're not homeless, we're not starving, our business isn't collapsing. We've got employees, we've got product, we've got possibilities. But is that really what you set out to create? Or is that where you've settled into? Did you have bigger dreams at one point? And did you sort of step them back? And are you really satisfied? Or have you learned to be complacent and content? So that enough is enough. And then that awareness of knowing that, you know what, I'm not satisfied. This isn't what I built my business to be. This isn't what I started down this journey to do. This isn't what I wanted to create in my life or be in my life or impact or influence that I wanted to have on my life and in my business and through my company or whatever. The third is that threshold where you're sitting there and you suddenly gain that awareness and you gain that dissatisfaction where you start to say, you know what, I, I got to. I got to step over the threshold. I got to go for it. I got to make that moment. I've got to, I, I, I just can't. Now that my eyes have been opened, so to speak, I've got to move into that next new place. I've got to become what I can become, or at least I've got to die trying. As I look at my notes, I remember that, you know, that threshold where you might be facing the bankruptcy, the closure, the employee layoffs, the the, the downsizing of the buyout. You know, you may be like, okay, if we don't do something, we're done. Or I feel as if I stay here any longer, I'm done. That threshold where you either stay where you're at or cross over into the new. That decision point is either made by you or for you. But if you're gonna turn the impossible into the possible, if you're gonna create a breakthrough, you have got to become aware of that threshold point. You have got to say to yourself, you know what? <sighs> this isn't working. Or if we continue to work like this, it's okay for now, but in a year from now, two years from now, 10 years from now, this ain't gonna be here. This ain't gonna work. This ain't gonna survive. Whether it's business, which we primarily talk when we get together here, but it can affect our personal and our fitness and our finance and our family. Then that kind of leads to number four, that insight of, okay, I have the ability, I have the power, I have the choice, I have the control to move, change, alter my destiny. I have in me what it's going to take to make it happen. I have the resources, I have the connections, I have the knowledge, I have the experience, I have the opportunity, I have the need. But whatever that insight comes from, it's that moment where you stop looking back or stop looking down at your feet, frozen in the concrete, and start to open your eyes and look forward and look ahead and be like, you know what? You know what? This might work. This could work. We could change it. It's that insight inspiration moment that, that when we as business owners pull back our shoulders, grab our bootstraps one more time and go, I'm going back in for the fight. I ain't dead, so I ain't done. I ain't giving up because nobody's taken it all away from me. We've all been in that position as business owners, entrepreneurs, mompreneurs, dreampreneurs, 
If you're starting out or you've been five years in it or 15 years in it, you've had that moment where you're like, roll up the sleeves, I'm coming back in. I'm done, I'm done with floating, I'm done with average, I'm done with what was is not gonna be what will be. And I've gotta either take control or the situation's gonna take control of me. And I don't know where all of the tools and the resources I need to make the shift are, but I know they're there. Which always leads to number five, and I sort of call it the opening position. It's that moment when you begin to step through the threshold and into opportunities. It's where you walk into the new room in the metaphorical sense, where you say, okay, you know what? I'm done in here. I'm stepping over and I'm stepping into, and I'm stepping into learning to ask for help, getting a coach, getting counseling, getting partnerships, going on new adventures, trying new products, growing whatever it is that you do. You're like, I don't know what I will do next, but I'm moving into the open space of opportunity. I am going to make it known that I am no longer who I was and what I did before, but where I wanna go and what I wanna achieve, I wanna attract the right people into my life, into my space, into my, my energy and into my company. You know, it's, it's interesting because as I watch as a coach, as I watch um, other businesses and uh, coaching clients and those people both emerging and middle, there's almost like this magical moment. And it's what I live for as a coach, what I love to see happen when I work with teams or I work with a company or I work one-on-one. -on -one. When they're like, you can see them almost physically in their, in their energy and then in their voice and then in their actions. You can see when they move into the threshold when they've crossed over the threshold and into the opening space, and they'll be in this place where they'll be like, I, I, hey, I'm in, I'm all in. I ain't going back over there. It's like the door slammed on them when they crossed in. And they're like, I don't know what I gotta do. I don't know who I gotta do it with. I don't know where, what, how, but they're like raising their hand like, I'm in. And just in that action, just in that voice, just in that moment of saying, I'm all in, I'm 100% I'm committed, I'm, I'm dedicated and determined to make this happen, and tell me what to do next. When you hear that, tell me what to do next. Show me where to go next. Talk to me about what this should look like moving forward. When I hear that, I'm like, Whoop. you just turned the impossible into the possible. You just took a failing company, a failing team, a dying dream, and you breathed new life into it. You took what other people said was gone, dead. <laughs> it's impossible, you'll, you'll never recover. It's impossible, and you made it possible. I, I think back through my own experience. I've worked in the real estate industry for 15 plus years, coached real estate agents for <laughs> almost seems like 15 plus years as well. I remember when the housing market <laughs> crashed or whatever we're politely calling it. And I saw people going out of businesses, not just realtors, but brokerages, and then you know, home inspectors and, and remodelers and everything related and attached to it. You could just see that coming, collapsing, and everybody's like, oh, it's gonna be impossible. We'll never recover. We'll never come back. We'll never survive this. This is the doomsday of doomsday. And they would ring the bell and call it out. And then there was this small percentage of people, this, this tight group, that's the people I hung out with, by the way. They were just like, no, 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 it's not impossible. It's not impossible. We just got to change our game. We got to change our focus. We got we to gotta figure out new strategies, new techniques, new pricing, new models, new whatever. Because we're not done. We didn't set out to fail. We set out to succeed. And right now where we're at is a challenging point. And it's not happening to me. It's happening for me so I can grow my business, grow my dream, grow my skill, grow my network. You know, I heard it said in the middle of all this, the greatest opportunity is when other people are losing, you'll be gaining if you have the insight. And so if you're sitting in that position, if you're feeling right now in your business, if you're feeling as if this thing that you wanted to create or this thing that you are creating looks impossible. It's not, it's not. I mean, there wasn't an airplane before the Wright brothers and everybody standing around them in the bike shop probably said, it's impossible, man will never fly. Thomas Edison, psh, history of failure. Look at his memoirs, look at all the quotes and things. 
I heard it said that he had failed 999 times before he invented the light bulb. Ended up having to come up with this thing that's a bamboo filament. I mean, bamboo, Thomas Edison, Ohio. Bamboo ended up being the solution to his problem to creating the first electrified light. There is a history of people, and we can go through chronic, just any age and any time, where people on the sidelines, people standing around were like, it's impossible, that will never work. That thing called Facebook, nobody will want it. You know what? They created a breakthrough. How? Often the best businesses, the most successful businesses, the entrepreneurs who succeed in sale are the ones who came into it because they had had enough of enough of enough. And they weren't going to continue to just get by and live in average and do what other people said they should do. They felt trapped and frustrated. And then they saw the threshold and then they stepped into it and stepped through it. So remember, you're going to start with dissatisfaction with where your life is or where your business is or what you're receiving. You know, The E-Myth is a great book to read if you haven't read it. You know, that idea that I can do it better. So I'm going to go out and do it better. And then pretty soon that doing it better becomes a business. And if you strategize and do it right and follow basic business principles, you not only do it better, but you train others to do it better so that you can have a business that does it better than anybody else. And then you can begin to take those holidays, those vacations, make those impacts in social circles and, and, and influence the world the way you want. Not because you're doing it better, but because you built a better business around being able to do it better. You get it? You understand it? If not, reach out, call me. I'll explain it a little slower and more detail. So I appreciate the fact that you're taking time to like and subscribe and follow and tweet and do whatever you do to make this known and, and to make it uh, accessible. And, you know, truth be told, the metrics that YouTube follows, hey, it's important to growing my business. So I'm going to encourage you to help me with that. And if you want to get something like this every single day, we do it Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern on the uh, Success Life or on my Facebook channel. So just find me, Eric G. Reed, on Facebook and check in at 8 a.m. And we work more a little bit on the mindset, but uh, same idea, same philosophy. You're on the podcast Success Life Live. So until we get together next time, go out, make your business a success, dive in. You can do it. You can transform the impossible into the possible. You have the talents and the abilities. It's there. Get frustrated, get upset, get annoyed, get discouraged, get caught in that gooey, sticky, ugly, and then stand up like, I'm done, I'm out, I'm over. I can make this different, I can make this better, I can make this change, I can make this grow. This isn't where I'm done, this is only where I'm beginning from. And then step into the opening and the opportunities that await you. All right, and if I can help you with that, hey, reach out and find me. Eric at ericgreed.com is my direct email address. Again, I do coaching. I'd love to be your coach. I'd love to help you grow your business, change your life, and become the person you desire to be. All right? So until we get together, have an awesome day. Bye-bye.